What's good guys, it is your boy Jason JV saying welcome to another reaction video for the second channel. And yes, yes, y'all, I know I'm a little tardy to the party with this one, but that's because my net was down temporarily. I was waiting for a new modem to come in because the fan bam done, done changed the plan. And so, yeah. But anyway, we are here now. We're going to take a look, a deep dive, if you will, into the WWE 2K22 ringside report number one gameplay deep dive so let's go ahead and get right into this thing thing i like it to hit here what's up everybody it's your boy lionel jinx i'm the creative director of the wwe 2k franchise and this time i'm not alone y'all i've got my homie with me she is going to be with me along this journey this ride with christina please introduce yourself <laughs> Hey y'all, I am Christina DM Fam, art producer on WWE 2K22, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Ringside Report, brought to y'all by the teams at 2K and Visual Concepts. We're here to provide regular updates and deep dives into the many areas and features of WWE 2K22. And this year we're interested. Hoo hoo hoo, cannot wait, cannot wait. Let's go ahead and get back into the same thing, let's go. 2K and Visual Concepts. We're here to provide regular updates and deep dives into the many areas and features of WWE 2K22. And this year we're introducing the WWE 2K22 ringside reports and you'll hear from Lionel and myself beginning now through the game's launch in March and after for the latest on DLC, patches and other updates. And we're not gonna be taking- Ooh, she says something about patches. I don't know if I like the sound of that, but I like the sound of her talking about, oh yeah, we're going to get into the deep dive on the uh, DLCs and um, some other updates and whatnot. The patches, though, that's got me a little leery. I'm not going to lie. Let's go. Taking this ride alone because we're bringing the homies from the dev team with us. So Come on. Bring them on. Bring them on. But before we dive into that, let's kick it off with a very quick conversation about visuals because let's be real, if y'all take a look at WWE 2K22, you might see some massive differences from previous cycles. Man, I just can't get over how great Edge looks right here, man. This looks fantastic. Let's go. And this is the best looking game yet. Just oh, a it's pretty. Bit. It's, it's so pretty. <laughs> Lionel, can you talk about how the teams approach production differently this time around, starting with the superstars? So the superstars, you know, in, in any WWE game are the backbone of the game, right? And so we have to make sure that we are doing our absolute best. I see so far the, these models are looking good. Rock looks great. Uh, hopefully as part of the DLC, if anything, Hopefully we can get an updated version of the Rock with the with the new uh, Brahma Bull uh, skull tattoo. You know what I'm saying, bruh? Cause that'd be fan freaking fantastic. Rather than us having to customize it and make our own um, updated version of the Rock, which you know it's not gonna look as good as as the original. You know what I mean, bruh? On representing every superstar to the best of our. Oh, I want to see that that Undertaker model. On representing every. Oh man, see that version of Taker looks dope. Oh yeah, that's the Lord of Darkness Taker. He looks, man, he looks sick. Bruh. Superstar to the best of our abilities. And in order for us to do that, we piggybacked on the same technology that you guys saw in, in NBA 2K Booker. 22, uh, where you know you look at their their players and the details and just the likenesses look amazing. And so you know we shared that same technology and brought that uh, into WWE 2K. Fun fact: I also met Booker T too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 22, like the cross polarization scans, um, improved hair, the, game. Just the, the amazing amount of detail that you'll see in our superstars is unparalleled for us. Yeah, and also the teams have overhauled the lighting engine and there's an all new VFX engine as well. Yeah, uh, so, you know, lighting is everything, right? So like all of these details and everything that we poured into our superstars. Uh, with Dang, Damian Priest looks fantastic. So does uh, Cesaro. Cesaro here looks pretty good. All these details and everything that we poured into our Check out Damian, man. Damian looks fantastic. Bruh. Yeah, 
It looks fire. Superstars uh, wouldn't mean anything if they weren't lit properly, right? And so um, if you, you know, take a look at this version of the game compared to any other year, like it looks like a broadcast. It looks photorealistic at times. And a lot of that is due to lighting. Oh, dude. And before I forget, there is all. Bruh, he wasn't playing about photorealistic. Look at that. Lighting. Bruh! With the exception of the, of the referee and the crowd, if you look at everything else, yeah, that, that looks damn near photorealistic. It looks and feels like you're actually watching a live event. Yeah, just the referee, if anything, he's the only standout. But yeah, everything else though looks looks really, really, really great, man. This is this is awesome. And before I forget, there is also a ton of new and improved yes. championships as well. And um, one of my first yeah, that was another thing I was curious about too. I was wondering if we were gonna get the 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 latest version of the of the United States title and the Intercontinental title. Personal favorites, mainly, mainly because it's the team I work with most cl most closely is the Environments team. Um, there are over 55 playable arenas, and we also have virtual pro boards in the game as well. So you might see some familiar faces. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah not my ugly mug. <laughs> All right, we know what y'all been waiting for, so we have some folks in the waiting room. I'm gonna go ahead and invite all of them in. So, y'all, we're so excited today because y'all know who we got. Please welcome the gameplay leadership team, principal designer, Jason Vandiver, senior designer, Derek Donahue, and senior producer, Jonathan Rivera. Y'all, this is extremely exciting, and thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of Ringside Report. Okay, so I don't want to linger any longer because folks have been asking for gameplay for a very, very long time. Uh, without further ado, the moment y'all been waiting for, we are going to show you a 1v1 match between Rey Mysterio and Damian Priest. So let's roll the footage. So at this point, one of the things we very intentionally called out to our fan base is that we have a redesigned gameplay experience. And starting with Jason, um, can you talk about what that means to you and how gameplay hits different? Uh, in WWE 2K22, uh, we have a completely new animation system. Uh, this system has allowed us to greatly improve the look and the feel of the characters. Basically, everything from the way the characters move and they traverse through the world, to how they align with each other during attacks has been completely overhauled and redone. Players are going to I gotta say, man, I really like the uh, the uh, texture work on Rey Mysterio's, um, at least the uh, top portion of his ring gear here, of his singlet. Like, you can see the, the, the folds and the wrinkles on that him. That means to you and how gameplay hits different. Uh, in WWE. Right here, see this, yeah, this is a good shot. See, you can see all the wrinkly details right here in the background or on the back of Ray, you know what I'm saying? That's usually a detail that gets mixed, um, that gets missed, rather, in the actual uh, gameplay. You know what I mean? But it's nice to know that you're actually gonna see that during the gameplay. It's just it's just those little things, you know what I mean, that you gotta appreciate in order for, you, for us to, you know, really appreciate the, uh, the much bigger things, you know what I'm saying? Bruh. 2K22, uh, we have a completely new animation system. Uh, this system has allowed us to greatly improve the look and the feel of the characters. Basically, everything from the way the characters move and they traverse through the world to how they align with each other during attacks has been completely overhauled and redone. Players are going to know. I don't know. I mean, the way Damien is selling those hits and the way he sold when he ran into that turnbuckle and hit that turnbuckle really hard, the animation looked, looked familiar. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, so please don't get it twisted, but that was rather familiar animation. This a significant difference the moment they pick up the controller. The characters are way more responsive than they've ever been. Oh, I like the way he sold that um, that Hurricanrana there. I don't know if that's literally her Hurricanrana. I think that's a variation of a Hurricanrana. I could be wrong. Basically, everything from- Watch how he sells it. Move ...and they traverse through the world, to how they align with each other during attacks has been completely overhauled and redone. Players are going to notice a significant difference the moment they pick up the controller. The characters are way more responsive than they've ever been. 
See, I like how he was just like, like, whoa, like, what the hell just happened? You know what I mean? I like that. That was dope. You no longer feel like you're fighting to control your character, to get them into position to do what you want them to do. Strikes, dives, springboards, they all connect more precisely. And that's also something that we really... Oh, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that, because that was one of the things I hated about 2K20, was that hit detection. Man, that hit detection was was awful. I mean, just terrible, bro. Struggled with and, and took the heart and tried to, to resolve this year. Another key change that we've made to the game engine this year is our physics system. Uh, while the series has always had havoc to some degree, it was primarily used for only hair and clock simulation. Uh, for 2K22, we've completely integrated havoc into gameplay, which has allowed us to introduce things like breakable props. Uh, the kendo stick starts to fray the more you use it. Tables, they break more dynamically. Uh, the chair even breaks. Um, and even elements within the environment Oh, I like that. So you can wear the uh, weapons down too, causing the break, and then they, before they ultimately vanish out of sight. You know what I mean? I like that. Self are now dynamically breaking, such as like the corner barricade, instead of relying on a canned sequence animation. It's a really big change and has helped to make the, the entire gameplay screen feel more dynamic. Awesome. Derek, same question. So for me, when we sat down to figure out how we were going to change gameplay for 2K22, one of the biggest things that we, we put as a priority was making sure the game is, is fun in a pick up and play kind of way. I want to be able to hand the controller to my friend who doesn't know anything about WWE, and I want them to still be able to have a good time and be able to just kind of hop in with me. So we made sure that with our controls redesign, all of the core actions are something you can discover just by button mashing. You should be able to basically play through a match without having known anything beforehand. But another big priority for us with that is making sure we're not, you know, smoothing over a lot of the details that returning fans like. So all of the high level of control that you expect to have in your character, all of the high degree of customization you expect, all of that still remains. Okay, so you've mentioned yes. new controls and mechanics. Hey, pause, uh, damn it. What the hell? How are you gonna ignore my commands, damn it? Anyway, let me wind back with what my man was just saying about customization details. Making sure we're not you know, smoothing over a lot of the details that returning fans like. So all of the high level of control that you expect to have with your character, all of the high degree of customization you expect, all of that still remains. Alrighty, that sounds good. I'm glad that the uh, customization is going to be able to carry over without any issues. I'm going to hold y'all to that. Okay, so you've mentioned new controls and mechanics. Um, combat itself is centered around three inputs, light attacks, heavy attacks, and grapples. So in this cycle specifically, what do those terms mean? So light attacks, those are your quick strikes, the fastest attacks in the game. Heavy attacks, those are kind of like strong strikes from previous years. They're bigger, slower strikes, but they deal more damage. And then finally grapples, those are where some of the bigger changes come into play. So you press the grapple button once to lock up with your opponent, but then from there you can press light, you can press heavy. Uh, those will do your light and heavy grapples. Okay, so what you're saying is when you grapple, you, you have options. You can do a light or a heavy attack, or you can do a grapple attack. Which, and then finally grapples. Those are where some of the bigger changes. Anyway. You just come into play. So you press the grapple button once to lock up with your opponent, but then from there you can press light, you can press heavy. Uh, those will do your light and heavy grapples, but there's all sorts of other options. Irish whips, drag, carry, all of those things come from the grapple state. So once you grapple your opponent, you have a lot of possibilities open up to you. Okay, and I want to toss this over to Jonathan too. So opening up these possibilities, can you talk about some of the combo options that players can dive into? Yeah, sure. I love how uh, simple and engaging are new dynamic combo system feels. I don't need to memorize every superstar's move set, but instead I practice the timing of my inputs in order to execute combos. Light attacks allow me to branch into a combo, and when I learn that light, light, heavy grab executes that move, I can take that and apply it to anybody I play with. Hmm. I love the exploration that our game provides to encourage the user to play with many different superstars and then choose whichever one is better suited for them. And if you don't like the combos that yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? It's like it's like um when you play a, a regular fighting game like your like your Street Fighters, your Mortal Kombat, you know what I mean? You cycle through every character on the roster until you find the character that is best suited for you. I like that. Hmm. We 
assigned, we also support customizing combos. I'm personally really excited to... Customizing combos? That's gonna be dope! ...see what cool combos our community creates. Okay, very quickly, I want to take it back to one point that Derek touched on earlier, which was about the accessibility of this game and being able to just pick it up and play. And I want to call this out mainly because I myself am a much newer player to WWE 2K. So for me, picking up and playing has been the whole experience. The controls are super easy to learn. And while my own habits fall back on button mashing the controller, even though we have that, I enjoy having to be very strategic and intentional about how I'm approaching this game, especially when it comes to the timing of things like reversals or finishers. So I can definitely- I like this, man. So I'm really liking that you actually have to, you know, implement some form of strategy. I mean, you can't just go in there all willy nilly and button mash, even though they, they, they say you can, but, uh, with them putting all this um, emphasis on strategies and whatnot, I kind of like that, man. I, I think it, it's. I feel like it's really gonna. It's really gonna emphasize that whole simulation feel, as it should. This is gonna be a very, very interesting game. I can't wait to get my hands on it, man. Let's go. Lee attest to, hey, if you're feeling intimidated by this, please don't. Pick it up, try it out, you'll have such a blast. And guys, don't forget, there will be a tutorial in the game. So if if the new controls intimidate you, remember, you can always check out the uh, tutorial. You know what I mean? So you can practice, excuse me, so you can practice, you know, the combos and all the different, you know, moves and uh, reversals and what have you. You know what I mean? Tutorials are your best friend. Let's go. But also, if you're a vet, and you've been playing this for a long, long time. Uh, can y'all talk about- Just like your boy over here, I've been playing these wrestling games since, uh, since Royal Rumble for the Super NES. That was the only WWF game I played on Super NES. Then when I started playing games again, wrestling games again, that is, uh, my first wrestling game was back on the, on the N64. It was WCW NWO World Tour. Then it was WCW NW Revenge, and then it was, you know, WrestleMania 2000, No Mercy. Oh, yeah. And I got those games still for my collection, you know what I'm saying? Played Warzone. I have WWF Attitude. I just, I recently got it like about a year ago. I haven't yet to play it. Um, but yeah, I've been playing wrestling games for a long, long time. And then finally, when, when they, on the PlayStation side of things, um, I did play, I did play the PlayStation 1 version of Warzone on the PS2, and then I played, um, SmackDown 2. I never played the very first SmackDown game, but I did play SmackDown 2 all the way up until, uh, you know, WWE 2K20. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's on the PlayStation or on the Xbox, didn't matter. I always had a wrestling game on, on either console, so yeah. Yeah, let's go how vets can better show off their moves and what that means for the overall strategy of their experience. So a lot of the strategy for our game comes with the new defensive. But, but here's the thing though, I mean, you got a, a new, new controls, you know what I'm saying? The controls are not gonna be the same as the older games. So even the vets are, are gonna have to learn how to play this game, you know what I mean? With the, with the new controls. So yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know about this whole picking up button mashing and then all oh, that the, the, uh, the uh, vets are going to be able to know what to do. Not necessarily. You change the controls, so we all going to have to learn. You know what I mean? Whether, whether we are noobs or vets, it don't matter. We got to learn the new controls. With options that we've added this year. So one of the biggest examples is breakers. Uh, instead of reversals being the only tool for countering your opponent's attacks, uh, grapples and combos actually don't use reversals. Instead, you counter them with a breaker. So hmm. when you're doing a grapple or a combo on your opponent, they can counter that attack by pressing the same light, heavy, or grapple input against you. So... Oh, for real? So that means if your opponent grabs you, does it work the other way? You can hit them with a light attack, heavy attack, or or counter their grapple with a grapple of your own? Those moves are countered with breakers. Everything else is countered with a reversal. So knowing what kind of attack you expect your opponent to perform can already prime you to know how you want to counter it. 
So there's already a mind game with that level. Then you have blocking, which is all new. Uh, if you hold down the reversal button, you enter a blocking stance, and that lets you withstand light, heavy, and running attacks. Oh, that's almost like, um... That's almost like, uh... WCW, NWO, Revenge, WrestleMania 2000, and uh, No Mercy. They had the block feature. They had a, a reversal for for grapples, and then they had a block feature for um, for strikes. Damn, that's old school. Uh, and then you can counterattack faster than your opponent can after blocking. Uh, you can also dodge with the right bumper, so you can kind of choose a direction and get out of the way really quickly if you time your dodge correctly, but Ooh. it's higher risk than a block. And then when you're on the ground, you also can button mash to get up faster, or you can press right bumper to do a quick get up uh, at the cost of some resource. Oh, I like that new kick out system. So you just gotta spam the uh, the uh, A or the X button if you're playing on the PlayStation. Yeah, I think I like that system better rather than the having to that stupid um that stupid little meter that goes around that wraps around clockwise. And then if you don't hit it right, then obviously you're, you're going to get pinned. You know what I'm saying? But then if you get the timing down right, you'll kick out no problem. I never liked that system. Bruh. I like that. Because it's, like, it's almost like the um, like the uh, submission system. Where you would have to mash, you know, certain buttons so you can get out of the uh, submission hold. Or if you're trying to force somebody to submit, you have to mash that button. Mash whatever button that, that they prompt you to, to mash. Hmm. So when you have all of those defensive options available to you, it makes when you're on defense, that's a lot more strategic. But also when you're on offense, you have to be careful with how you want to attack your opponent so that they don't counter you. So our community has... In other words, you don't want to um, spam certain moves because your opponent will be able to catch you there. You always want to switch up your uh, your uh, move set. You know what I mean? You utilize every move you got in your arsenal. You've been speculating about the HUD and like guessing like what you know, these little glowing meters mean and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you be the first to break this down and break the news. And let's dive into uh, the HUD and give the, the community some clarity here. Uh, so our goal was to create a HUD that strips down all unnecessary aspects and simply gives the user the information that they need without distracting the user from the in-game action. So at the very top, you'll have the vitality meter. And this is basically your health. Okay. Below that, you'll find a special meter, which is a resource you want to spend to perform signatures, paybacks, or defensive action. Finally, at the bottom is your finisher meter, where you can store up to three stocks. So there's one thing that's that's missing that I think a lot of people are like, where, where where's the reverse stock? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about like, you know, the changes we made there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, obviously the biggest change uh, that we made was removing the reversal stock from the HUD. We felt that 2K20's matches came down to how the users manage their reversal stock. We wanted to bring a bit more skill to a match by giving the users unlimited reversals, but making them a little bit more difficult to execute. In our internal matches with 2K22, we get wild swings and back and forth and a, a, a bunch of oh-so-close moments that we really feel make the match memorable. And in addition to that, um, we added a new stun meter that shows up on the characters when it's close to being built. So we're really excited to show off our new HUD and, and for, for our users to play with all of the new additions and our streamlined approach. Cool. Like w one of the things that, you know, at the end of the match where I'm like, you know, in previous years or, you know, iterations, once you, you could, you, you basically knew once the, your opponent didn't have any reversal stock, all you had to do was hit your Sega finisher, match was over. That's not the case anymore, right? Like someone can just pull out like a reverse on this this back and forth. Um, and so, Derek, can you talk about the like the you know how strategy is 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 incorporated into that that part of the this new mechanic? Yeah, so with reversals no longer being on a limit, that opens up a lot of possibilities for how your opponent can count you, right? Like they could always pull a reversal out, uh, or if you're using combos and uh, grapples, they could hit you with a breaker. But the stun meter that Jonathan mentioned earlier, that's one of your biggest tools for making sure that you can pull off your biggest move without getting countered. So lighter attacks, while they don't do as much damage to the vitality of the opponent, they're better at filling your opponent's stun. And if you can get their stun meter filled, that's your opportunity to perform an attack without the risk of getting a reversal or a breaker. 
but mashing is back y'all like i love it it creates a whole new level of like intensity in those those uh those tight matches and uh yeah like i, I gotta practice my finger strength on like, <laughs> just, just so i can keep everyone down when this game goes online damn man that's gonna be interesting man now that the reversals are unlimited but then they're gonna be a lot harder to implement depending on how badly you are you are beaten down or whatever bruh let's go all right y'all we can go on and on but unfortunately we're out of time so to close out now that we're nearing the end of production what are y'all looking forward to most for the game whether for your own experience or with players specifically let's start with jason then derek then jonathan i'm really looking forward to seeing how my rise turns out uh, we've been working so hard on game yes that is what i'm most looking forward to is the my rise you know what i'm saying more importantly uh the female my player i want to see how her story plays out first and then most definitely we'll check out the male my player uh afterwards anyway play that haven't really been able to look at the rest of the game uh, those guys have been really 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 working to deliver an awesome awesome story this year and um from everything i've seen uh, they're ready to deliver. you know what i was thinking Ooh, we'll, we'll, we'll get right into this just a bit but you know what i was thinking even though the male and the female my players are separate it would be cool if they can still like kind of run into each other like depending on who you finish the story as first you know what i mean like let's say you play as a, the, the female my player first right and then her story's done then you move on to the male my player side of things it would be cool if the male my player runs into like and like the female my, my player they kind of like cross paths you know what i mean and kind of just like kind of like like meet up or whatever I don't know, just kind of a little fun feature to have with the stories. It kind of makes the stories like kind of like interlock with each other, you know what I mean? Really, really working to deliver an awesome, awesome story this year. And um, from everything I've seen, uh, they're ready to deliver. You two, get in the ring. For me, uh, it's the back. Yo, HBK look pretty good. Let's see. Okay. The rest of the game, uh, those guys have been really 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 working to deliver an awesome awesome story this year and um from everything i've seen uh, they're ready to deliver yeah hbk looks really good here and then i think this is supposed to be beth phoenix although she's kind of got the uh i don't know beth phoenix look, look, looks a little weird i mean she look, look at her eyes she kind of has like this like this lifeless look in her eyes you know what i mean like like she just looks dead. I'm sorry, but I mean, details, details. I'm just saying. You two, get the right. Right here. That's a good shot of HPK right there. With the short hair and everything, man. Look at this guy. That's probably the best HPK model I've seen in quite some time. Let's go. For me, uh, it's the backstage. Uh, the completely redesigned backstage that I think people have only seen a, a small peek of. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff going back there, especially with the verticality. And for me, it's I'm super excited to see Rey Mysterio in our showcase mode, playing some classic matches that we recreated for our, for WWE 2K20. Yo, I need to get that shot of Eddie. In some classic match. Yo, Eddie looks really good here. Bruh. Recreated for our, for WWE 2K22. So I think people are going to be really excited about that. Huh? See what I tell you? That's almost seamless. You know what I mean? Like, if you ignore the referee, that was almost seamless. Rey Mysterio in our showcase mode, playing some classic matches that were recreated for, our, for WWE 2K22. So I think people are going to be really excited about that. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us for the first ringside report ever. For the Wait, is it me or did they blur out the original referee's face? Yeah, they blurred out the original referee's face. I wonder why that is. Maybe because he doesn't work for them anymore? I don't know, but I just find that weird. Really excited about that. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us for the first ringside report 
ever for this That's cycle. messed up. You didn't even <laughs> ask me, Christina, like what I'm looking forward to. That's just messed up. It's going to leave me but out. We'll That's take it back. We'll <laughs> take it back. All right. Rewind. Lionel, what are you most excited for? It's everything, right? Like, you know, uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to like have my hand in, the, you know, every single cookie jar. And um, as you can tell, like this COVID weight ain't going away anytime soon. <laughs> but um, yeah, like, I, it, you know, it's seeing, you know, what, what we're doing on the gameplay side and how that bleeds into universe and how it bleeds into my rise and, and, and my GM, my faction, like it. We've done so much um, in the time that we we, we have, and I, I'm just super excited for everyone to get their hands on with it and, and just have fun. Like again, like just practice, practice now, practice your your thumb strength because you're gonna need it. <laughs> your thumb, st- thumb, st- thumb, st- thumb strength, <laughs> Dude, thumb exercises, little thumb push-ups. Y'all, so All that right. again, that wraps it for our first ringside report. Thank you to Jason Bandiver. Derek Donahue and Jonathan Rivera for joining us. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> was I supposed to, you was I to, supposed the to leave? Was no, I, I, I think I was. <laughs> okay. So once again, for real this time, thank you to Jason, Derek, and Jonathan for joining us. And thank you to all of you, the player community, for tuning in for our first ringside report. We are so excited to release this game and we can't wait for y'all to get your hands on it. Yeah, thank you guys uh, so much uh, for for joining us and thank you all for tuning in. Um, We will talk to you all soon. And in the meantime, check us out on social media at WWE Games. Okay, bye. Yo, so yeah, guys, that was the WWE 2K22 ringside report number one gameplay deep dive. And yeah, this is sounding rather fascinating, rather interesting. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait to see how the new controls are going to are going to work. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely can't wait to see how the new uh, reversal slash blocking slash dodging system you know what I'm saying? It's really going to work. You know what I'm saying? Bruh. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I definitely can't wait to check out the, the, the all the other features, the My Rise, the My Faction and everything. Um, I, I definitely do hope that we get a deep dive on all those features uh, leading up to the game's uh, eventual uh, release. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I'm excited. Let me know how you guys are feeling. You know what I'm saying? The feedback. You know what I mean? What's your feedback in the conversation down below? I mean, it's greatly appreciated. If you guys are with this reaction, you know what I'm saying? Uh, y'all know what to do with that thumbs up down below while you're at it. Please make sure y'all liking this video. You know what I'm saying? It would help me out greatly. And uh, don't forget, uh, if you want to watch this uninterrupted on your own free time as you would like, well, you know that you know where that link for the original video is going to be. So feel free to hit that up whenever you like. And uh, yeah pretty much it don't forget to check out of course all the links in the description down below it is greatly appreciated and uh until the next one it's your boy jason jv's and y'all have a blessed one all right peace